southbound uh, across the Cuomo Tappancy Bridge. We did have some delays on the northbound side, up around 9W and Nyack. Some debris in the roadway there is now cleared out of the way. Inbound George Washington Bridge, maybe 10 minutes. We've got some construction now on the upper level of the GWB, so the right lanes closed there. Lincoln looks pretty good, just about a 5 to 10 minute wait. And the Holland still a little bit heavier, especially from 1-9 and then in through the traffic lights, a little closer to 20 minutes there. I'm Tom Kaminsky in the WCBS Traffic Center. Just count how many days and hours you've been working here. Is that 29 what years, 29 years, um, 8 months and 22 days, and 9 hours and 39 minutes and 54 seconds. Well, listen, <laughs> apparently you're a numbers person, so what's the temperature for crying out loud? Oh, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, knucklehead? 60, I think 60-something. 60 63, <laughs> okay. I know. I'm counting the numbers. <laughs> 75 will be the high today with sun and clouds mixing. Tonight clear, not quite as cool. 50s in the suburbs. Some of the burbs were in the 40s this morning. Tonight's low in the city and nearby burbs 60 to 65, though. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, Saturday and Sunday and uh, Monday. There's a chance of a thunderstorm, which is kind of fitting, because we'll be long gone by then. Do you think the new place will read the weather forecast? I asked that at 5.30 this morning. I don't think so, but they'll be talking about sports anyway. All right. It's uh, 9.40 in the morning at WCBS. We finally reached the point, Paul, where I have no idea what's next. Well, we've had so many people coming in to say goodbye, and many of them include our former staffers here at WCBS. Hi, it's Catherine Chaffee. The station has been a major part of my life. I cut my teeth in that newsroom. It's been a long time since I was on the air, but the station has remained a constant pillar for me, a place that embodies the highest level of journalistic integrity. A special thank you to Tim Sheld and Chris Quimby for hiring me, and to Paul Wayne, Steve, Marla, Peter, Sean, and the late Fran Schneido for teaching me how to report and write, but also for teaching me about humanity. Lisa Chankovich, thank you for being a great friend and the best producer. I'm really going to miss hearing your voices every day. She mentioned Chris Quimby. I had a Chris Quimby dream, Paul. You were telling me this, and you put it, what, on your phone? You wrote I, it down in your I phone? I wrote it down. I, I guess I might as well tell the story now. We have time now. Sure, sure. Let's see. Do I have it handy here? Well, welcome, no, to the no. Freud, welcome to the Freud part of the show. Yeah. It, honestly, I had this. You know what? i got to find it. Uh, this, I'm, I'm actually not prepared, and that's my own fault for, for bringing it up and not being prepared to talk about it. But it's the... Um, it's the end of WCBS, as we know. Sunday night is when we uh, hand it over to ESPN. But I think I had a premonition. And um, this was back a year ago. It was a year ago. In, you were on vacation or something, or no? I don't know. It was uh, it yeah. was uh, June of 2023. Well, you look, you look for that. I want to. No, I got it here. Hold oh, on. you have it, it here. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. okay. All right. Again, um, we're, again, we're treading water. We never do that. <laughs> it, it's just weird, and I had to bring this up because uh, I wrote this down. Here's my dream. And Chris Quimby was our manager at the time, even though what I'm describing here, BlackRock, predates her. It doesn't really matter because right. it's a dream. Mm -hmm. It's 4 a.m. at WCBS, and we're preparing the morning newscast. The scene is BlackRock. The overnight anchor is toiling away. The newsroom is unusually busy with faces we don't know. Hmm. Chris Quimby is there looking sullen. The systems aren't working. Suddenly, I hear a collective groan as four men at each big 16th floor newsroom window pull black curtains across the glass. I look to the studio, the lights are turned out, and the board is dark. WCBS is no more. Hmm. I stand there in shock. Martin, Martin Untroib, sees my face, walks over, and hugs me. My first impulse is to quietly smile. Yes, severance! <laughs> then, then, I think of all the people losing jobs. Then the emotion hits me. I hold back tears as I look at the spot where the teletype machines were years ago, and I think of my first time there in 1978 when Dad drove me in for a tour. Yeah. I tell Martin the story about how Ben Farnsworth was in the studio that morning subbing for Jim Donnelly. This part is true. This really happened. The memories of that visit with Dad, those years in that same spot, the thread that has been woven through my life, makes me realize how much a part of me this has been. Sad only scratches the surface. Mm -hmm. But grateful, too, Paul. Exceedingly grateful. Not only to have worked with you, Thank you and all the people here at WCBS and the amazing listeners, but um, to have the opportunity to sit here with you right now and talk about it and have a farewell, which is not something that very often happens in this business. As I said earlier... 
Uh, I don't think we would be doing this without your work and the archives that you have kept for WCBS. Some of them hilarious. Like the 14-year-old, when they mentioned the, the snowing in New Jersey, the report that you had called in, and you recorded it, and you're yelling in the background, I got it on tape. I was I, so proud. I think this many, many people who have worked here uh, have, have the memory of hearing WCBS as a child. And the, the memory that I have was that the station sounded important. Yes. More than any other station on Absolutely. the dial. It W-O-R sounded, sounded official but stuffy. Well, this station sound, was yeah. important but friendly. You can sound official and you can sound important. And WCBS, I think, chose the right way. And just, this is weird, Paul, just as I was reading this to you from my phone, yeah. and I mentioned the name Ben Farnsworth, guess who just popped up in a voicemail? Wow. Ben Farnsworth. Yeah. So I can tell Oliver, the booker out there, and Lisa T. Yeah. Yes, we've got Ben. He's going to be on the air in just about 20 minutes. Which will be amazing to hear because he was so smooth. and we I a- stole everything from him and from Pat and Jim. and Lou. We all are thieves of the people who came before us, and we are the better for it. Thank you so much. It's 945 here at WCBS. We heard from Bruce, who's in Philadelphia. I love Wayne and Paul. It's a legend that's going down. Thank you for all these great years of listening. Wayne, remember that you used to work in Philly, and you had the same experience. I worked in Boston. You worked in Philadelphia, where you could finish your job in one of those radio stations and get in your car and hit the 880 button, and it would come in loud and clear. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even in Philadelphia, I listened to 880 all the time, as did a lot of people. We had a lot of... WCBS listeners in Philadelphia. And I, during my time in Philly, I worked at WFIL, yes. which is a legendary top 40 station. That was their version of the old 77 WABC. Mm-hmm. And WFIL had brought back oldies, and I was a news guy. Jeff Kaplan hired me. He was the morning news guy. I was yeah. the afternoon news guy. And Jay Myers, I want to thank him. He was my program director who, who sent me a note, and I haven't gotten back to him yet, nor have I gotten back to about a thousand notes, but I will. Uh. And Jay said, I did the best thing ever for you. I let you be a boss jock. And I did. For a day, yeah. he let me be a boss jock playing the jingles with the reverb. Every radio geek like us can identify with the thrill of that. Can I tell you something? That is the approach I think you brought to this, and I think that's why so many people remember you from this radio station when they say, you know, WCB. Oh, Wayne Cabot. And I, 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 I sincerely mean that. We've heard that from so many comments. And I think that your approach and maybe what you learned back then, maybe it's just our, you know, uh, baby boomer uh, Gen X thing going on that we grew up with it. But you brought it here, and I think... I didn't really bring happened. it here. No, it was already no? here. It was already here. Jim Donnelly said that he's a disc jockey, but instead of playing records, no. the stories were the were the songs, really. Yeah. And he would pivot between the songs, as he did beautifully. And I think we all kind of, through osmosis, picked up on that. And that is why the legend of this radio station endured for 57 years as an all-news station and 100 years as a radio station. 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, WCBS through the years, we put together this special that is going to run. Uh, in addition to the show, we're going to start at 10 o'clock uh, over the weekend. Weekend, Saturday morning at 8 a.m. will be its first airing. We have put together with the work of Dave Plotkin here at Odyssey, New York, the, the sound of this radio station, which is 100 years old next month. It will celebrate 100 years as the new home of ESPN. And some of the audio that we have goes back to the 1920s. It's at, well, at least one. I don't want to overpromise. I think at least one piece of audio goes back to the 1920s. Do you want to know what smells like it's 100 years old? What's that? The banana I have in my bag, <laughs> which is going bad. And I think when people come in to visit us, our studio guests, in about 15 minutes, they're going to say, what is wrong with you people? Some people miss the sound. I don't think we're going to miss the smell of the place. 948 traffic and weather together. Tom Kaminsky. We have had so many people, so many listeners say how much they are going to miss us. I need to mention one listener, my friend Gretchen O'Shea. Gretchen is a first grade teacher here in my town of Cranford at uh, at Brookside Place School. Gretchen, her husband Sean, diehard Mets fan. Uh, they they are relentless listeners to WCVS. And Gretchen actually sent me a little thing. She listens mostly on the app. Last year, in 2023, she had a total of 14,463 minutes. So it says you are in the top fir- top 1% of the station's listeners. And well, uh, she subjected even their kids to it as well over the years. So, uh, Gretchen, everybody that, that has been listening over the years, thank you. 
thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate it. Uh, let's uh, go back on over to City, uh, that stretch at City Field, over to the westbound side of the Grand Central. A little bit slow right in that area of LaGuardia Airport. Uh, we had uh, just some volume there. The midday roadworks getting set up there. Westbound side LIE is also getting slow in toward Queens Boulevard. We are getting reports of a collision at that spot. We go to Long Island, uh, Nassau County, westbound on the LIE, just in through Jericho Turnpike. Slowdowns there in through Glen Cove Road and Willis Avenue. Northern State, some delays at Meadowbrook Parkway. Southern State, just a little bit of stop and go as we get toward Meadowbrook and again at Hempstead Avenue. I'm Tom Kaminsky in the WCBS Traffic Center. 63 in Manhattan, sun mixing with clouds near 75 today and clear tonight down to 60 to 65, 50s for the Burbs and tomorrow sunny and warmer, 70 to 75. Sunny and even warmer over the weekend, temps both days, Saturday and Sunday in the middle 80s. How about I that? I love that. And Monday as we dutifully complete the five-day forecast because uh, you and I are our slaves to format, Paul. It's it's just reflexive. <laughs> Our five day forecast for Monday: variably cloudy and humid, and a thunderstorm possible. The high near eighty five. Can we play a commercial and maybe uh, shed some tears and then come back? Okay. All right. Uh, don't cry on my shoulders. All I ask. By the way, we're sponsored. I'm by- wearing a suit today. Do not cry on my suit. <laughs> sponsored by Greenwich Hospital, part of Yale New Haven Health. Will you hear this? This is paper. Remember I told you I, I, I wanted to say my goodbye, and Sunday I was on the couch and feeling a little sorry for myself, and I said, oh, I thought it, and I went into my computer in the bedroom, sat down there and banged out the script. I have it on, on paper in front of me, because I was wondering about how I get get through it to say my goodbye. All right. Well, Paul, I am really interested in hearing what you have to say. I hinted at a little bit of it earlier, that I'm here because of Art Athens and Lou Adler and Rob Sunday. I had a chance to work with all of those men. Art Athens was away from WCBS for a while. and Who did you work with on Monday? You were with Rob on Sunday. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll I'll be quiet now. You can't resist. I'll be quiet now. So, Art Athens... Needed a student intern. I came in. Almost immediately, he gave me a job. He hired me to work in the, the overnight shift in, in the newsroom. And then later, when I was a freelancer at 1010 Wins, Lou Adler and Rob Sunday were there. And I run into Tim Sheldon, a story. He says, hey, I'm going over to ABC. You should apply. And so Lou Adler, I remember saying specifically, you want me to make a call? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ABC. And um, I remember he said, do you want me to make a call? I said, Sure. And so I sent my tape and resume, as I remember, on a Monday, had a meeting on maybe a Thursday, and Friday morning I got the call, would you like to come to work for WCBS? So that was, as I said, 29 years and 8 months and 22 days and 9 minutes and 53 minutes and 39 seconds ago. Yeah, the accountants are counting too, Paul. My coworkers and I have been so overwhelmed with your kind regards. From our WCBS listeners, we all agree the hard part will be breaking the habit of punching the 880 news button. It's sad, it's a shame, we carry wonderful memories. I don't have a great answer to the question we're hearing. Well, where's the news going? What do you mean, where is that? I don't know. The format is gone, and the world is changing so fast. At the end, all I can say is thank you and goodbye. And that's it for me. Paul, thank you. You are a gem. I love you. We're going to stay friends long after this thing wraps up. And now you're getting me all, all misty-eyed over here. See, I finally did it. <sighs> it, it, took, it took eight years of working yeah. with you to get you to get a little smoky eye over there. Yeah, up until now, it was just your breath. <laughs> 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 working behind the scenes in our newsroom this morning, desk assistant Sabrina Solomon. Our writer is Chris Rausch. Rivka Oppenheim at the WCBS Producers Desk. Okay, one more big finish. Well, one more time for us, see Bismarck's Panas Business Desk anyway, as we go to Bloomberg's Tracy Jonke. Paul and Wayne, I just want to say, the listeners know this by now, uh, but I'll say it anyway. What you hear every day from Paul and Wayne and the rest of the WCBS team is real. Unbelievably talented people who take great pride in their work and uh, take seriously uh, the great responsibility of telling people's stories. Uh, and I'm going to miss listening to you uh, tell these stories every day. Um, This is a philosophy, really, that makes uh, 880 so great, this realness. When I started doing Money News for WCBS, Tim Sheld said something that no one has ever said to me before. We want you to be you. Uh, What I really wanted to be was Joe Connolly. For me, he set the standard for telling business stories in a relatable way, but Tim gave me permission to be myself. Uh, So here's a money story to wrap things up. The Dow I'm glad you took his advice. I'm glad you took his advice, because we've loved having you on, Tracy. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Yeah, and again, Joe Connolly is is the greatest. 
You guys are the greatest. Now, what about the Dan Dow? Oh, you know, it's up. He's up. He's okay. Um, If you have retirement funds, they're still there. 33 points. It really matters to us, as you might imagine. (laughs) It does. Uh, NASDAQ's up 83. That's great. The S&P is up 18, the closest to its July record since it set that record. And look who just walked in. You mentioned Joe Connolly. Look who just walked in the door. Here's a magic. Here's a familiar voice on the radio. Hi, Joe. (laughs) Did you hear what Tracy was saying about you? No. That she wanted to be just like you and sound just like you. Oh, and that, nice. when I grow up, that, nice. when she, she, said grows, when she up. grows up. <laughs> Joe doesn't have head- <laughs> Joe doesn't have headphones on, so we can say whatever we want about him. Hey, Joe, uh, <laughs> yes. as long as you're here, uh, yeah. you are remembered by everyone. That's nice. And, they, and I can't tell you how many people have mentioned specifically the business breakfasts right. over the year. Right. We used to have a thousand people more and more at those places. And people continue to ask me about the business breakfast. It happened yesterday. And uh, do we have a couple of minutes right oh, now? Oh, yeah. Sure. For you, anything. You know... Um, I was going to say, I was just walking in to say hi, I was going to say that, you know, what's happening here at WCBS is the result of macroeconomics in the changes in the economy of the news industry, but the growth of these new platforms uh, shows that there is still demand. And, you know, just briefly, some people have asked, I started listening to WCBS in college, and I've been listening ever since, right up until this morning. And uh, I came here when I was working at WDRC Radio in Hartford, Connecticut, and I would come down and cover news in the, on the street in the city on the weekends. And uh, then I became the business reporter, which I loved because sometimes you can give people information that is useful and helpful to them. And Barry Berman and Dick Colt from the Connecticut Radio Network invented the small business reports and they wanted them only on WCBS they put them here from that Harvey Nagler uh, went on to create the WCBS business breakfast because we now had the small business reports and Tim Sheld kept them going for years and he was my mentor in getting me focused on what people wanted to hear about and people still ask about the business breakfast and the media seems to be evolving i'm still doing business breakfast but now i'm doing i'm doing them for companies that's hey joe i want you to tell us more about you're going to stick around for a few hours yes. okay because we're going to yeah. get to our our show in just a moment but I, we need to go to format yes and do the cbs news at the top of the hour do we really what are they going to do, do? <laughs> but let's do it this way paul and joe yeah set your time to wcbs news 88 Four tones will follow. The fourth and final tone marks the exact time. It's 10 o'clock. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by Progressive Insurance. I'm Deborah Rodriguez.